Hello viewers. Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Muhammad Abul Hassanat, Associate Professor of Physiology, Gazi Medical College, Khulna. All of you are welcome to my first lecture of ECG series. And today, my lecture topic will be about the physiological basis of electrocardiogram. I hope this lecture will be helpful for the beginner and also first and second year MBBS student. Let's see. If we attach the electrode on the surface of the body at different angle of the heart, it can detect the electrical activity of the heart and we will get a picture or recording like that. <clears throat> this is called graphical recording of the electrical activity of the heart. Okay, so what is electrocardiogram? Electrocardiogram is nothing. It, uh, it is a graphic record of the electrical activities of the heart obtained by placing electrode on surface of the body. Now the principle of electrocardiogram. Actually, body fluids are a good conductor of electricity. So when cardiac impulse passes through the heart, a small portion of the electrical current spreads all the way to the surface of the body. And if electrodes are placed on the skin on opposite side of the heart, these electrical potentials generated by the current can be recorded. And that is the, here is the recording of the electrical activity of the heart. This is called electrocardiogram. So this is the principle of ECG. And actually ECG machine works on the principle of galvanometer, okay? Now, what are the components of a normal ECG? Normal ECG consists of, a, uh, consists of waves, complexes, intervals, and seconds. So here you can see the different waves, complex, interval, and segments. Actually, there are five basic waves produced by the electrocardiogram. The waves are P, Q, R, S, and T. So we can see some waves are positive deflection or upward deflection. Some waves are negative deflections, okay? And Q, R, and S, these three waves together forms a complex called QRS complex. There are also certain intervals like PR interval, QT interval, and RR interval. And there are two important segments. ST segment and PR segment. ST segment is very important for the diagnosis of ischemia or hypoxia of the cardiac muscles. Okay, so in this picture you can uh, see that some waves are upward deflection, some waves are downward or negative deflection, some are uh, waves uh, remain uh, along the isoelectric line Actually, isoelectric line, this is the, this zero voltage line. Huh? This is called isoelectric line. When there is no net movement of the current in the heart, the ECG machine cannot detect in any electrical activity and it will produce isoelectric line. Okay. Now, the basic concept of upward and downward deflections. So when positive or upward deflection is produced, actually, when a depolarizing current, depolarizing current means positive current, spreads toward the positive electrode, it will produce upward or positive deflections. Second point, if the depolarizing current spreads away from the positive electrode, that will produce a negative deflection or downward deflection in the ECG paper. Number three, in case of repolarization, when the repolarizing current, that is the negative current, moves towards the negative electrode or away from the positive electrode, that will produce
sorry. So in case of repolarization, when the negative current spreads toward the negative electrode or away from the positive electrode, that will produce a positive or upward deflection, okay? Number four, voltage or height of the wave depends on muscle mass. If the muscle mass is more, that will produce a wave of high voltage. Huh? If the muscle mass is less than the height of the wave, it will be less or voltage, it will be less. Next point, we should keep in mind that if the current is very fast, then it will produce a sharp wave. But if the current is slow, then it will produce a dome-shaped wave. And the last point, we have to remember that when the mean cardiac vector is perpendicular to the lead axis, it will produce isoelectric line or biphasic line. So don't worry, I'm going to explain how these biphasic deflections are uh, produced. So the next picture for further explanation. Here you can see it is the positive electrode and here is the negative electrode. This positive electrode is also called the exploring electrode. And this arrow represents the direction of a positive current. So when the positive current moves towards the positive electrode or the exploring electrode, the galvanometer needle deflects positively. Okay, and will produce a positive or upward wave in the ECG paper. Now the next uh, figure, here you can see just opposite thing happens. Here, the depolarizing current or positive current that moves away from the positive electrode, okay, or towards the negative electrode. This time, this galvanometer needle deflects in negative direction and will produce a negative or downward deflection in the ECG paper. Okay, so let's see what happened uh, during the repolarizations or in case of movement of negative current. Here you can see this arrow represent the direction of a negative current or repolarizing current. So this time this repolarizing current or negative current is moving away from the positive electrode or this negative current moves towards the negative electrode. This time, this galvanometer needle deflects positively and will produce the positive or upward deflection in the ECG paper. Now, the next thing. When a negative current or repolarizing current moves towards the positive electrode or moves away from the negative electrode, the galvanometer needle deflects negatively and will produce a negative or downward deflection. Okay. Let's see for further explanation. Here you can see this is the electrodes, okay, and this is actually attached with the galvanometer. And here you can see the direction of the movement of the depolarizing current. So in the first case, in case of A, you can see clearly that this depolarizing current moves towards the positive electrode or exploring electrode and produces a positive or upward deflection in the ECG paper. In the second case, or in case of B, this depolarizing current is moving away from the positive electrode and will produce the negative deflection. In the third case, you can see here the direction of the movement of the current is perpendicular to the direction of the electrode or axis. 
okay so when there is a 90 degree angle between the uh, axis of the mm -hmm. mean qrs vector or depolarizing current and the axis of the lead that will produce a isoelectric line or it may produce a biphasic deflections another picture you can see more uh, will understand more easily so here you know that when the positive current is moving toward the positive electrode, it will produce positive deflection. When the positive uh, current is moving away from the positive electrode, it will produce negative deflection. Now, you can see here from this position of this positive electrode, initially, you can see the wave is coming towards the positive electrode. That is why initially it produced upward deflection but when the current passes away at that moment this electrode pr uh, will produce or galvanometer needle will deflects negatively so when the position of the uh, lead axis is perpendicular hmm, to the axis of the current then it will produce a biphasic deflection or a straight line or isoelectric line okay now let's see how ecg waves are produced so here is the positive terminal of the galvanometer or ecg machines okay and this positive terminal is also called the exploring electrode okay and here is the negative terminal now you know the electrical activity of the heart originates in the sinoatrial node then the impulse rapidly spread through the atrium and depolarizes the atrial musculature. Okay. And finally, this current or impulse reaches the AV node through the internodal pathway. So during the atrial depolarization, the net direction of the current is towards the towards downwards and to the left. That means this positive electrode or the exploring electrode observe that positive current is moving towards this positive electrode or coming okay so what will happen it will produce positive deflection in the ecg paper okay and this deflection is actually produced by atrial depolarization this wave is called p wave so p wave represent the atrial depolarization and the normal duration of p wave 0.08 to 0.10 second and you know you have already know that it is a positive or upward deflection now the question is this height of the p wave is less why can you remember in the early part of my, my today's lecture i have mentioned actually voltage or height of a wave it will depends on the muscle mass actually atrial muscle mass is less than the ventricular muscle mass so that is why atrial, atrial depolarization it will produce a short wave okay so that is why the higher height of the pf is less number two this shape of the pf is not a sharp it is actually a dome shape or blunt okay why? Because the slow nature of depolarization of the atrial muscle. Because atria have no Parkinji system for fast conduction. But you know ventricular muscle is innervated by the Parkinji fiber. And Parkinji fiber is very fast. Okay. Now, the next thing. Just after the completion of the P wave or atrial depolarization, now you know the electrical impulse travel very slowly through the AV node and the bundle of his. So you know AV node is a slow conductor of electricity. So during uh, this time, ECG machine cannot detect any electrical activity in the heart because of low voltage. So it will produce a isoelectric line. Okay, so this is called actually PR segment or PQ segment. So here you can see 
there is a brief isoelectric or zero voltage period after the P wave. It represents the time in which the impulse is traveling within the AV node. But the conduction velocity is greatly retarded. Okay. And the bundle of his. Though the conduction through the bundle of his is a fast, but ECD machine cannot detect the electrical activity of the junctional tissues. Okay. But when this uh, electrical current spreads to the musculature, working myocardial cell of the heart, then ECD machine can detect the electrical activity. Okay. So actually this uh, AV conduction time, this is uh, called PQ segment or PR segment. Another thing, very important, there is, uh, you know that after the atrial depolarization, atrial repolarization follows. But in the ECG paper, there is no visible wave representing the atrial repolarization because it occurs during the ventricular depolarization. That means when the atrial repolarization occurs at the same time, ventricular depolarization occurs. That is why atrial repolarization is masked by the much larger ventricular generated QRS complex or ventricular depolarization. So why atrial repolarization, repolarization is masked by ventricular depolarization? Because you know ventricular muscle uh, mass is thicker than the atrial muscle mass. This is one important thing. That is why the ventricular depolarization produces a high voltage. Another thing, you know depolarization uh, call, uh, results due to opening of the voltage-gated sodium channel, okay? And repolarization occurs due to opening of the voltage-gated potassium channel, okay? And you know that sodium channel is very fast than the potassium channel, okay? So repolarization is a slow process, but depolarization is a fast process. That is why atrial repolarization is actually masked by the much larger ventricular depolarization. Now, impulse, enter into the ventricle and first it uh, supply the interventricular septum through the bundle branch, through the right bundle and left bundle branch. So if I ask you which part of the ventricle is to be depolarized first, what will you answer? The answer is first the interventricular septum is depolarized. Okay. And this depolarization occurs from left side to right side of the interventricular septum. So here you can see the direction of depolarizing current that occurs from left to right. So that from the direction of this current of the positive uh, wave, you can see the current is moving away from the positive electrode. Here is the exploring electrode, positive electrode. So do you think it will produce a positive deflection or negative deflection? It will produce a negative deflection because the positive current is moving away from the positive electrode. Okay. So it will produce a small, sharp, negative deflection. And this wave is called Q wave. So Q wave indicates the septal depolarization that occurs from left side to right side okay so here you can see that q wave represents the depolarization of the septum from left to right and this wave is small okay but sharp so what is the reason of the sharpness and the less height of this uh, q wave actually small wave is due to less quantity of the septal muscle and less time of depolarization, okay? And sharpness is due to rapidity of the depolarization. Because actually, interventricular septum is uh, supplied by PARC in this system, okay? Now, another question you may ask that, why the left side of the septum is depolarized first, okay? So there are actually two important points. First of all, here you can, in this picture, 
you can see this is the right bundle branch and this is the left bundle branch okay this left bundle branch give short branches to the interventricular septum but right bundle branch do not produce such branches or do not give such branches to the ventricular septum so that is why the depolarization starts at the left side of the interventricular septum okay this is uh, number one fact another fact this actually this left bundle branch originates little earlier than the right bundle branch from the bundle of his that is why when the electrical impulse passes through the bundle of his it first enter into the left bundle branch then it will enter into the right bundle branch so that is why uh, left side of the interventricular septum is depolarized first okay so these are the two important factors that is responsible for depolarization of the interventricular septum from left to right now what will happen here you can see that after the activation of the ventricular septum the next part of the heart that is to be depolarized that is the major muscle mass of the ventricular wall okay then may initially the electric current that moving downwards to the apex and spread to the major area of the ventricular muscles okay and during the ventricular depolarization the net direction of current that is actually represented by this blue colored vector so the direction is toward the positive electrode or exploring electrode so you can ask me the why uh, this direction of this vector is tilted little tilted to the left ventricle again the answer is same the left ventricular muscle mass is thick so left ventricle finish depolarization later little later than the right ventricle so the net direction of the current is from right ventricle to left ventricle so actually this uh, <coughs> this is the net vector produced by the depolarization of the right and left ventricle and the direction is toward the positive electrode so again that will uh, produce a positive deflection in the ecg paper and this wave is called r wave and here you can see this r wave is very tall okay so this is the upward positive bigger sharp wave and this r wave represents the depolarization of the apex and major portion of the ventricular myocardium now you can ask me why uh, r wave is very large i have already explained the ventricular muscle mass is greater so the voltage or height of the wave it would uh, it will be larger okay and the sharpness here you can see the wave is very sharp the sharpness is due to the rapidity of the depolarization due to presence of the park in this system okay because park in the system is very fast okay that is why the wave is sharp now what will happens when the ventricular depolarization is completed okay all the ventricular muscle uh, the major part of the ventricle uh, become depolarized now the last part of the ventricle that is to be depolarized that is the posterior basal portion of the ventricle pulmonary conus and upper part of the septum so that is the last part of the ventricle that is that is to be depolarized so here you can see in this time the when the basal part is depolarized the direction of positive current is completely reverse they are moving away from the positive electrode so it will produce a small negative deflection that is called s wave so s wave indicates the depolarization of the posterior basal part of the ventricle okay pulmonary conus and upper part of the septum and the wave is short because due to less 
muscle mass okay so it is a small downward negative and sharp wave and it represents the depolarization of the posterior basal portion of the left ventricle and the pulmonary conus okay now these three waves ultimately q r and s they forms a complex called qrs complex okay so initially q wave is due to septal activation then r wave is due to depolarization of the major part or major muscle mass of the ventricle and s wave is due to depolarization of the posterior basal portion pulmonary conus and upper part of the septum so all these three wave actually they together they forms a complex qrs complex and this qrs complex actually indicates the net depolarization of the ventricle and the vector net vector that is produced during the ventricular depolarization that is directed downwards and to the left and this mean qrs vector this is also called cardiac axis okay so the qrs complex consists of deflection produced by the ventricular depolarization and normal duration is 0.08 to 0.10 second and here you can see how the mean qrs vector is formed and this is called the electrical axis of the heart or cardiac vector okay so cardiac axis also called the cardiac axis and the direction is downwards and to the left that means base to apex so this is very important later on it will be uh, helpful for you to determine the cardiac axis eh? axis deviation okay now when the whole ventricle become depolarized what will happen the next event is ventricular repolarization but you know between uh, depolarization and repolarization there is a special uh, phase in the action potential of the cardiac muscle that is called the plateau phase so during the plateau phase in one hand the positive calcium ion is entering into the cell and other hand a positive potassium ion is getting out of the cell so actually there is no so these two ions actually counterbalance the each other and make the curve flat and produce the plateau phase so during the plateau phase there will be no net movement of current so during this plateau phase the ecg machine do not produce any upward or downward deflection so it will produce during this time it will produce a straight isoelectric line that is called st segment so st segment represent the plateau phase now when the uh, plateau phase is over the next event is called ventricular repolarization repolarization means negative current here you can see the negative current that moves away from the positive electrode or that means apex to base in case of depolarizing current the net direction from base to apex that means towards the positive electrode but this time when the repolarization occurs it uh, this happens in the reverse directions now the negative current is moving towards the negative electrode or moving away from the positive electrode so what will happen it will produce a positive deflection in the ecg paper because we know when a electric current moves toward the elect uh, negative electrode or moves away from the positive electrode that will produce a positive deflection that is the t wave that is produced during ventricular repolarization okay which is dome shaped positive wave of longer duration now you can ask me why the t wave is not a sharp wave why it is dome shaped because you know repolarization it is a slower process than the depolarization okay so t wave is dome shaped and longer duration because repolarization is slower than the depolarization depolarization now this is the whole pictures that is recorded by a ecg lead during the 
spread of electric current throughout the cardiac musculature now repeat so first initially the is is the machine that produce the isoelectric line or straight line that is called the zero voltage when there is no electrical activity in the heart then when uh, this electrical impulse depolarizes the atrial musculature it will produce the this p wave okay p wave is short because atrial musculature is less okay and there is no parkinji system that is why the shape is dome shaped now after depolarization of the atrium then the impulse slowly travel through the av node and then through the bundle of his so during this av conduction is is the machine cannot detect any electrical activity in the heart because of low voltage okay so this segment that is why in this time it will produce a straight line or isoelectric line this is called pr segment that is from the ending of the p wave to the beginning of the q wave q no q wave is the um, event of ventricular depolarization okay so before ventricular depolarization it is the time between the atrial depolarization and ventricular depolarization during this time there will be no positive or negative deflection this is called pr segment the next event when the impulse enter into the ventricle first it depolarizes the interventricular septum you know from the left and uh, left to right that is why it is produce a negative small deflection that is called q wave so q wave indicates the septal depolarization then during the major ventricular depolarization it will produce a very tall r wave okay this is the r wave why it is tall because the ventricular muscle mass is thick and why it is sharp due to parkinji system because parkinji system is very fast now the last part of the ventricle you know the posterior basal portion that is uh, depolarized and during the depolarization of the posterior basal portion the direction of current is away from the positive electrode and it produces a negative s wave okay so s wave indicates the depolarization of the posterior basal portion pulmonary conus and upper part of the septum now that means this qrs complex ultimately together they indicates as a whole ventricular depolarization so when the whole ventricle become depolarized due to plateau phase this ecg machine do not produce any deflection so ultimately it produce a straight line in the ecg paper and this is called st segment that means from the ending of the s wave to the onset of the t wave okay this is called st segment so it indicates the plateau phase so after plateau phase is occur ventricular repolarization is occur begins and it will uh, produce the t wave is it okay so another uh, point i have to uh, i want to mention that is the pr interval it is the interval between the onset of p wave to the beginning of the q wave that means it is the time interval between the excitation of the atrial musculature and the excitation of the ventricular musculature q wave that means it is produce a ventricular depolarization so this time is very important and this time actually indicate the conduction time of impulse from atria to ventricle okay and another interval you can see here that is qt interval that begins from the onset of the q wave to the ending of the t wave that means qt interval includes both ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization so now uh, you can see here is the pq or pr interval okay sometimes some late q wave is not prominent so in that case pq interval is also considered as pr interval so it is the interval between the onset of the p wave and the onset of the qrs complex it is the time interval between the beginning of electrical excitation of the atria and the beginning of the excitation of the ventricles 
this period is called pr interval and the normal pr interval is 0.12 second to 0.20 second so what is the importance of this pr interval it indicates the conduction time of impulse from sn node to the ventricular muscle so if the pr interval is prolonged it indicates there is a conduction defect or there is a, there may be a block in the conduction pathway okay so in case of first degree and second degree heart block this pr interval will be prolonged another important interval that is rr interval here you can see it is the distance between two successive r wave this is called rr interval okay so the normal duration of rr interval is 0.8 second so that is the duration of one cardiac time of one cardiac cycle so what is the significance of the rr interval rr interval signifies the duration of one cardiac cycle it helps in calculation of the heart rate and helps in determination of the cardiac rhythm actually if the all the rr intervals are same that means the rhythm is regular but if you see the distance between uh, the successive rfs are not same it varies that means uh, the rhythm is irregular okay and another thing it uh, this rr interval helps to calculate the heart rate so i will explain how heart rate can be uh, calculated by reading a ecg paper in the in my second lecture of the ecg series okay now proceed forward another interval i have shown in the ecg pressing that is qt interval actually contraction of the ventricle last almost from the beginning of the q wave to the end of the t wave this interval is also called qt interval and ordinarily ordinarily this time is 0.35 second significance this represent ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization and it corresponds to the duration of the electrical system and i also explain in the ecg pressing the what is pq segment or pr segment actually this indicates the av conduction so when the electric current travels slowly through the av node uh, during this time ecg machine do not produce any positive or negative deflection that will produce actually straight uh, isoelectric line that is why this segment indicates the av conduction and it's st segment i have already explained this is actually produced by the plateau phase huh? so it is a time at which the both ventricle are completely depolarized this segment roughly correspond to the plateau phase of the ventricular action potential so as soon as the ventricular depolarization is completed ecg tracing returns to baseline so that is actually isoelectric line so st segment starts from the end of the s wave to the beginning of the T wave and it is an isoelectric line and it indicates the plateau portion of ventricular action potential and why this st segment is very important it is very important uh, because it helps to diagnose the ventricular ischemia or hypoxia yeah? because under those condition this st segment can become either depressed or elevated normally it is uh, remain along the isoelectric line but in case of if there is any ischemia or hypoxia this st segment may de may be depressed or may be elevated so actually that's all about the introductory class of the electrocardiogram so lecture 1 in the next class i will talk about the electrical axis and the ecg patterns in the different lead of the ecg so if you like my video then please subscribe like comment and share stay connected for the more upcoming exclusive lectures on ecg thank you very much allah hafiz